afternoon, good evening, um, depending on where you're joining from. My name is Toyin Yumasiri, call me Coach Toyin, and I would like to welcome you today. So um, do drop a comment, let us know where you're joining from, um, let us know who you are. Um, yeah, if today is your first time of ever joining any of my lives, you're welcome. Hello to Instagram, those joining on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Thank you so much. Today, the topic I'll be talking about is how to invest and trade with Africa. This is a hot topic. <laughs> it's a hot topic, right? Um, I usually filter almost daily, actually, a lot of questions around uh, trade with Africa, investing in Africa. And today I want to break a few things down and hopefully share with you and help you on your own journey. So yes, feel free to share this, feel free to comment, feel free to invite more people. Okay, I see Miss Nikki6500 joining on Instagram from New York. Hi Nikki, thank you so much for joining. Um, also, for those on LinkedIn, yes, please drop a comment, let us know where you're joining from. Um, I always like seeing familiar faces. I have a lot of people that <laughs> show up, um, you know, yeah, we've come to know each other. So welcome to the community if this is your first time. Okay, so let's get right to it. How to invest and trade with Africa. The very first thing is to identify or to um, decide what role you want to play. Okay, so I'll break down a couple of roles you could play because sometimes people that are new to this space part of the question they ask me is what are the opportunities? Like, where do we, where do, where, where should we be looking? But the very first thing is to um, decide on the role you want to play. Okay. G, uh, dot Stephanie, uh, you're joining from Delaware. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Is this your first time? I'm so happy to have you. So today, again, we're talking about how to invest and trade with Africa, right? So the first thing, I mean, I mean, in, in a very <laughs> structured way, not the one other people do. Like I've seen a lot, I've seen enough. And um, part of the biggest mistakes that people make is they don't structure it. They are not approaching it as an entrepreneur or as an investor, right? They're just, right, we'll talk about that. I see uh, Ralph uh, joining, I'm proud of you. I'm from West of Sudan. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate your kind words. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so very first thing is pick a role. There are a couple of roles that I would drop right now because depending on the role you're playing, the support you're going to need or the journey you're going to go on, <laughs> it's a journey, is going to be different, okay? So for example, you could be an exporter, right? In advancing trade and investment, let's just break a couple of rules down. These are the decision process you have to make. You could be an exporter. Now, an exporter could be an exporter on the continent, exporting out of the continent, or an exporter outside of the continent, US, India, China, wherever you are, you're looking to export your product or services onto the continent of Africa, a region of over a billion people, projected to double to 2.2 2 billion in a couple of years. Okay. So the first role would be, are you an exporter? Are you trying to export your service or your product? And in terms of services, there are a lot of services, right? You could be a service provider, consultant, so many, right? Right. In this, in this old um, talk around advancing trade with Africa, there are lots of services um, that is in demand, right? It's been in, in demand technology services, consulting services, financial services, shipping services, agents. There are a lot of stakeholders that will be here to, to support trade. That's why the power of trade, it advances business growth, economic development for, the, for regions of the world. Now, if this is your first time, you've probably never heard me say this, but international trade, which I teach, I teach international trade and entrepreneurship. International trade, from my own research, drives global wealth distribution. Okay? International trade drives global wealth distribution. And regions of the world that participate at the highest levels get to benefit the most. Exports, right? 
Export is about expanding your products to new markets beyond. Now, if you've been in any of my classes, this should not be new to you. Okay, so there's the exporter. What an exporter needs to know looks different from, say, if you're an investor. An investor, you want to put your money to work. Like you're not, you may not be the one in the field, on the farm, doing anything, but you want to invest in sectors. Okay, so what an exporter would need right? Supply chain, logistics, packaging, distribution, farm to market. That knowledge base is different from if you're an investor. If you're an investor, you're looking for investment opportunities and you're looking for what sectors, what, where are those opportunities? That's what I call trading from. Where are they? Where are the opportunities? What sectors are growing in which country? Where, where what, who? Who should you be engaging with? Right. So again, if you're just joining, thank you so much. Today we are talking about how to invest and trade with Africa in very structured ways, not those stuff that people are just I see out there. Okay. First, I said you have to pick a role. A role. What I always say is it's like uh you're in a soccer game. Pick pick a team. What team are you on? Get your jersey, get your number, you're gonna kick to win. What I also say in a very funny way is if you're in the spectator seats, just looking to learn, that's fine. That's okay. But just recognize the game, pick a role. Do you just want to know what's going on or do you want to actually engage and participate? Okay. So to participate is what I'm talking about. My focus is those who want to participate, right? Because only those who participate reap the reward and the benefits. So if you're an investor, the types of information investors want, what are the opportunities, where, sectors, manufacturing, agriculture, right? Import, export, right? You want to put your money to work, right? And you're looking for the highest return on investment. Along that line, I always talk about risk reward <laughs> matrix, right? What, what appetite of risk are you looking to um, engage in? Now, for exporters, which I talked about, we talk about market entry development, market entry strategy, all of those things. So pick a role because the role you're going to play will depend on the path you're going to go. Okay? So don't get confused. If you're an exporter, then you want to know how to work with buyers, how to work, right? Those are the things. But if you're an investor, you're looking for where to invest. And they are vehicles for investments, right? You want to protect your investment, right? That's what I'm talking about. Is that the role you're playing decides the journey you want to take. There's also the importer. So on the other side of the coin of exporter is the importer, the person that will be on the other side receiving. Part of the um, mistakes that people make a lot is they assume that in international trade, they can do it by themselves. <laughs> The complexity, the rigor, the intensity, the tenacity, what is required to be successful in international trade. This is, it's not, it's the Olympics of business. For you to compete at the highest levels and distribute products and do all those things or invest cross border. I talk about local, regional, like those are things in my courses, right? That I teach people about. Like you have to approach it with serious understanding, right? Research, develop, right? You have to dig deeper. If all you know about Africa is what you read on the headline, <laughs> you've been sold. Well, that's fine if that's all you believe, but you cannot really invest based on that information. You can't trade and invest. You have to approach it and dive into trade information. What we call trade information is, is unique, is exclusive, it's expensive. Sometimes you have to pay market research analysts to get your trade information. You don't read that thing on, on, right? So trade information is expensive to acquire. That's why when we host events, that's what we're bringing to the table is you cannot find trade information, you know, on Google. <laughs> like It doesn't exist. Like it talks about government incentives, government programs, initiatives, sector-specific activities going on, PPP opportunities. Um, you know, all, it, it has a lot of data. Right. So it's sometimes, let's say you want to penetrate a country, say, for example, Nigeria, um, you want data on that country, certain types of sector specific data. Right. Unfortunately, because people don't do this work I'm talking about, the preliminary research and work, 
they rush in and they rush out. They rush in and they rush out. We've all heard, you know, I'm sure you've heard stories, right? In my estimates, maybe 50% of those stories could have been, you could attribute it to um, bad judgment and lack of sophisticated um, approach. So part of why I'm showing up to share these things publicly is because I've seen enough of, you know, people assuming, people rushing in without research. Like, even in the U.S., you're not going to start any business without understanding the sector and the people and the stakeholders, right? Then why do you think going to Africa, just because you are from Africa and your family is there, that you can just give money to somebody that don't have skills to actually execute a transaction? You are trusting people without the skills. And in fact, what I have found is that non-Africans do a better job at investing in Africa because they approach it as an investor. They haven't any sentiments. It's about, it's, it's about commercial engagement. It's about the transaction. It's about return. So they, are, they do more work to protect their investment than I have seen the diaspora. The diaspora make a lot of mistakes, a lot of assumptions. They are the, the African diasporas are the <laughs> weakest link in a way but they have to be strengthened because if strengthened, they will be the biggest player and they will lead. Okay. If you want to lead as a diaspora, all those things you've been doing, stop it. No sentiments. Deal with the continent as an entrepreneur with commercial interest. Now, your secondary interest could be, oh, my family, my this, fine. But I have seen that non indigenous Africans do a better job, right? They approach the continent much better in a more sophisticated, advanced way than those who actually, you know, feel like they know, right? The... If you approach it casually, you will get casual results, <laughs> right? If you think it is easy, <laughs> you get what you get, okay? The fact that the familiarity people have with the continent is actually what is in the way, is that when you're an investor, yes, it's good to, to have relationships on ground, but if you don't put on your business hat, and protect your investment, you get what you get. You put it in the wrong people, wrong place, right? In fact, one of the things I advise um, diaspora is that don't look at the content through the lens of your own country, right? Because your some depending on the sector you want to go into, your own country may not even be advanced. May your own country may not be the best place you should be investing in. That's why I said non-native Africans, right? They they don't. They, because they don't have any strong affiliations with any country, they look broadly at the opportunities. They are just looking for opportunities, right? They are looking for the biggest opportunities, lowest risk. Sometimes people have high appetite for risk and then they approach it that way. But at the end of the day, you know, just approach it with savvy, be savvy, be more savvy. Um, Kobalaji, this is exactly where I am at now, doing education and supplier market research to enter the Liberian market. It's a bit nerve-wracking. <laughs> okay. This, this is why I have courses, Kobalaji. Like, if you want to learn how to export, if you want to um, trade and investment facilitation, those resources... The reason I invest time in putting those resources together is because I keep filtering similar questions often. And what I'm trying to do is put structure around all of these things. In fact, I'm hosting, uh, not me, we're partnering uh, with a major financial body like a Bankers Association, um, Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. They're hosting um, a series of Meet the Experts where MDs, managing directors, and uh, CEOs of top banks in Nigeria we'll be meeting with Nigerian di diaspora to educate them really about investment, not just investment opportunity, financial, it's like financial literacy 
right? If you want to get more, because these institutions on the continent, they are, they have financial education and um, instruments of trade, vehicles, right? Loan, mortgages, depending on which sector. The other day I was talking to one of the um, directors at, um, I won't mention the name, but it's a government financial institution, right? And it's it's an Exim Bank of a country, not US, but an African country, Exim Bank. Um, that's um export import bank. Every country has its own um export import bank, which is government finance institutions to advance in, import and export. These are the things I teach people and connect people to. So I was sp speaking to him and saying, okay, what are the facilities? What, what trade facilities do you have? What instruments? What are you financing? What are you doing right now? Because there's something called trade financing. You want to trade. Oftentimes, again, those that are less savvy, you are looking at, there are ways of financing using uh, different financing instruments. Again, that's something people, the, the more sophisticated you want to get, the more you have to start understanding these things and, and seeking that type of connection. But again, start where you are. So yeah, I was talking to him and he was now explaining their, their financing exports out of that country. So let's say you are someone, the diaspora, and you want to export out of that country into, say, U.S., depending on what you're looking for, this institution is saying they will finance that transaction. They will give you a loan. That's what it means with interest, obviously. Meaning, at, a, at the more, so that when you're growing at so here's the thing when you're involved in trade and investment right you can start small start small but where the game is the real game is volume is at a certain level and most of the people who do it really well they use financial instruments to hedge their risk to secure this like those are stuff right so we're we're bringing in we're partnering with bankers you know mds to start educating people right um, if you've ever attended any of my events, and these are resources, right? Even here in the US, I host, you know, I've hosted the Exim Bank. We've hosted Africa Export Import Bank. You know, why do I host all the financial institutions? Because when we are talking about trade, there's the buyer, there's the seller. Even when both people want to do trade, we also talk about who's going to finance, who's bearing the risk. How do you grow and scale this up? which is the next level. These are the things we start saying people need to know, people need to educate themselves on. Okay, so I'm seeing more comments or is it questions? <laughs> okay, your sessions are reality to our very eyes. Yes, you know, what I'm trying to do here is just tell people where things are. Hi, Tony, I received your email. I have to take your three courses. I hope I didn't miss the deadline. Okay, we will, yeah, I'll reach out Let. Okay, I'll take note of this. Let me put it in my mind to follow up. Like when I'm doing lives, please drop a comment, but I, I need to start um, notes so that I know to follow up because once I close this, most of the comments disappear. So definitely, um, the so the way, okay, I, I was going to share this later, but since people are asking this question, let me answer one more question. I have seen the, um, Kabbalah G says, I have seen the various courses and offerings, but I'm not sure which one I need. I'm sending you a message to know where at best to fit. Okay, okay. Okay, I, I, I understand. That's why when I started this live, I said the very first step is to pick a role. Because what I'm going to recommend to you depends on you. Like this is about you, not me. I am just a guide and a coach connecting you, empowering you, educating you, uh, supporting you, inspiring you, motivating you. That's like I've picked my own role. Okay, facilitating this, creating platforms to help those at the front lines. Like even this year, that's why I launched leadership. I'm saying everybody to you want to lead, be a leader. <laughs> that's my new mantra. <laughs> you want to lead, be a leader, success, wealth, right? So I've picked my own role. Okay. Um, Jade Zaria Newman says, I am interested in learning about African trade. Absolutely, you're in the right space. Thank you for being here. Really do appreciate it. So yes, please drop comments, questions. We've been at this for many, many years. I host international summits with all key stakeholders from economists telling us the numbers to government telling us, you know, policy, 
I also teach government stakeholders um, trade and investment facilitation. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm going to answer those questions. Please just keep talking. But I want to also follow my train of thought. So I started with saying, pick a role, exporter role, importer role, investor role, right? You want to put your money to work. Also start understanding your risk level. There's also consulting and trade and investment facilitator, okay? A facilitator role is more, you're not the buyer, you're not the seller. You are the one making things happening, happen. You're bringing things together. A facilitator could be a sales agent. Um, there's also distributor, you, 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 right? So <laughs> these opportunities kind of like abound. So I always try to start with what role do you want to play? Right. And I have the, probably the first class I would say everybody needs to take is the trade and investment facilitation course. Why? It opens your eyes to the landscape. Right. Because sometimes people struggle is how do I pick a role when I don't even know what's going on? That class is designed to say this is the landscape. This is the landscape. These are the stakeholders you'll be seeing when you come into our events, when you come into our network. All, there are all kinds of interest groups. Your interest is different from their interest, is different from government's interest. This, there are different actors in this space, right? So depending on what you want. So if what you're trying to do is even just, first of all, I want to explore the landscape, then trade and investment facilitation masterclass is the first thing. And it's a course out there. I've, I've conducted that, clock, um, that class many, many times. If you've been following me for over a year, you've probably been telling, you've been seeing, I have a friend um, who is a lobbyist in DC. He'll be like, Tori, you're always doing something. I say, yes. Like last year, I was, <laughs> I, was, I was teaching so much. So this is a class like trade and investment facilitation, right? So I even have many versions of it, but the version, one of the versions that I held with um, 14 government agencies is actually available for purchase. So that's the one I put out there. But members of my, people members of my uh, membership, they have access to every of those class. I've hosted that class so many times that now I'm like, you know what? I'm moving on to something else. Leadership, personal development. If you want to take the course, it's there. So anyway, um, okay. Okay. I see Mr. Jade of Lagos saying, how do you, how would you correct a mindset that understands failure as part of business risk, but considers every failure as being as being part, part on the right path to success. Okay. Hmm. That's a fantastic question. How would you correct a mindset that understands failure as part of a business risk, but also considers every failure as being part the path on the right path to success? Okay. Let me quickly, this is important. The way I'll answer it is that Failure is a signal you don't know what you're doing most of the time. And part of what I teach in entrepreneurship and international trade is approaches as a student. Until you've mastered something, we are all students of these things. The mistake people make in entrepreneurship and international trade is that they assume they know. When you run in thinking you know without doing research, without taking classes, without taking coach, you will encounter more failure. So you're right. Accept it as part of the process. If you are doing something you've never done before, your very first attempt, you're learning. So wisdom, the people that are wisest, instead of making their own mistake, they will call somebody like, that's why people consult and get coach, is that they want to lower their failure rates. That's, that's the way to look. The way you lower your failure rates in business or any area is you find an expert and they teach you. Otherwise, go on your own journey, make your own mistakes, and then hopefully your own failures teach you. Okay? So you're right. Part of business, part of entrepreneurship, particularly, the reason people talk about fail fast is learn fast. Learn fast. So some people will say, I will learn my own way. Good, good, bold. It might take you three years, four years, five years. Go your own way. But what I have found in certain communities, they don't want to spend five years learning what Tony has already spent five years mastering. Wisdom. They will come. Tony, how much is your hourly rate? Come on, spend one hour, two hours with me. Download this. Where is your course? Take it. 
Why? Because my courses is loaded with, if you want to master, you might even spend five years, I know if you understand, because I've interviewed, I've had to host more than 100 of the leading experts in advancing trade and investments. Next month, I'm hosting another summit um, in conference. So if somebody like myself spent more than five years, uh, even before that five years, my time working for Fortune, uh, Fortune, the world's largest company, managing supply chain logistics should count. My colleagues were international buyers. It should count for something. But here's the thing. Don't even listen. To, if you don't want to listen, that's fine. You will figure this out your own way. And on that journey to Jade's point, accept your mistakes and failures, learn it really fast and move on. That's, that's how this is. That's why in the world of business, people embrace failure because they know if you are going into a space that you've never been before, caution, right? Caution. But unfortunately, people rushing. Oh, is it, I'm going to launch this. Ah, launch, launch. Please launch. The market will whip you. That's why we talk about market entry strategy. Whenever you hear me say market entry strategy, is because you need a strategy. People go in without a strategy. They go in with assumptions. Everything you are doing without a market entry strategy is you're assuming. You're assuming the market will buy what you're selling. You're assuming the market wants. You're assuming so many things. You don't have marketing strategy, sales strategy. This, you think it's easy. So, Jade, you said, how would I connect the mindset? It's that mind, the mindset that believes. Like, I want to be a medical doctor. First ask, what does it, what knowledge do you have to embody? How long is it going to take you to be a successful medical doctor? <laughs> Four, five, seven years. Get to work. In fact, go to medical school. How long is it going to take you to become a successful entrepreneur? Ah, uh, they don't tell us, right? Nobody tells us what I'm saying right now. We all make it look easy. In fact, People think, oh, Tony is doing this. It's easy. <laughs> try, try it. <laughs> that's what I mean. So that's how I would respond to that is that there's a mindset that believes or assumes being an entrepreneur or advancing trade with Africa is easy. And they assume and, and think they, they, have, they know what they are doing. And when they engage and they start seeing those failures you're talking about, it's really because you don't know what you're doing. And that's why I'm saying like people need to start admitting that all of these messy stories we've heard about, could it be that people do, did not do their own due diligence? There is no non-African that is go, going to step in Africa without doing market, market entry research. Only Africans do that to themselves. <laughs> right? In fact, the US government, you know, part of the work, right, we do like, Part of what they've shared with me is like they spend 18 months conducting deep research to understand the landscape, the sector, the players, the competition, testing, pilots, interviewing, building a landscape of buyers, distributors, before they will ever even fly to step in. In fact, they hire local consultants to go and they will pay them Go to the port, get me data. What are Nigerians buying? How much? What volume? Hmm? Right? But nobody wants to do that. You just want to show up and then assume you, you know, people will start. Um, no, it, it doesn't happen. So that failure is really, that's how I, I, I attribute that mindset is um, too much assumptions. Um, Modilu, John, I wear glasses and I should wear my contacts when I'm doing this. I don't like wearing glasses because of the glare, but my contacts, that's why I'm squinting. I was, re I was watching the replay of one of my lives. I was like, why are you saying, oh, hi, <laughs> oh, you do wear your glasses. Okay. <clears throat> Modilu, John, she says, um, interested, oh, okay, interesting concept when talking about Africa. Proud to be African and appreciate investors. Okay, good, good. So you are, you are, you are engaged. 
So again, let me let me also recap for those. I see more people just joining. So pick a <clears throat> pick a role. Are you an investor? What sectors do you want to invest in? Are you an exporter? What products? What region? The journey you're going to go on, the path you're going to go into will be different depending on the role. And one of the fundamental things when I talk about trade and investment facilitation is just exposing people to the landscape and the different stakeholders. So once you pick a role, you know, there's even an opportunity for consulting. When you're not the exporter, you're not the importer, you're providing services that connect the dot. There's trade financing institutions, okay? There are government agencies, right? That houses a lot of information on grants and programs, right? For example, if you're in the US, um, there is um, Prosper Africa, 17 government agencies under President Biden, right? Position to advance trade with Africa. I hosted the, one of the leading experts there. So if you go to my website, toyumisiri.com, you find that resource there. An hour of US government agency telling you what the how the US government will support you. Right? Right? That's that, it's it's what we call trade information. It's like, don't do this thing by yourself. Maybe that's another thing I would say. If you do it by yourself, you get the results you get. Most of the savvy investors, um, they it, it, it takes a team. It takes leading experts because the knowledge you have about the landscape determines the outcome. So don't make assumptions. I guess that's the key. So pick a role. Decide what role you want to play. Understand the landscape. And then decide on your goals. Right? In terms of engage as a business, right? So there's another world out there, the world of charity. It's been mixed together. So sometimes I have to help people separate these things to, oh, I'm helping Africa. Oh, what does Africa need? Ah, oh, this is help yourself. <laughs> you know, people who come, oh, I want to help Africa. Mm. <laughs> Africa can help you. <laughs> okay, I'm trying. I should be not laugh. Those those my laughters are. <laughs> Depending on if you know me or not, how you interpret it, it's too funny. I've seen enough. Oh, I'm here to um. <laughs> I should not be sarcastic. Okay, let me be serious. Okay, <laughs> let me move. <laughs> I've seen people that that's another mindset. You are helping Africa. Okay, help. <laughs> that's I. You know, one of the things I teach <clears throat> in my entrepreneurship class. So I teach about six, six steps. If you're, if you're, in, if you're new to entrepreneurship, even if you're, if you, if you've been an entrepreneur, you can really go to the next level with my classes. So I teach six. There are really primarily five. The first one is when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with people, we think about where are you, right? We do a lot of mindsets shifts because your, your business is a reflection of you, <laughs> right? Your business is a reflection of your mind, what you see in the world, because you're giving back to your ideas and your mission. So th that first session is usually um, rest, you know, going through, what do you see? Are you trying to build a 10-story building or one-story building? Do you just want to feed your family or you want to feed the world, right? Like, I'm, I'm kidding. Like, how far can you see, right? What's your vision? How big is it? <clears throat> because if I understand that, then I can assess your capacity and then I can figure out, okay, okay, you, you want to, okay, is this big? Your foundation should be as secure as this. What then happens is that people, I've seen so many things where people say, oh, I'm going to build a hundred story building. I'm going to build the world. And then they're showing up with shovel instead of a bulldozer. Or they have this plan on paper, but they don't have, they're missing the skill. That's where failure, those are the fail, those are the things we talk about failure. You're trying, you're trying. It's not, it's not clicking. Trust me, I can I see it, I recognize it. I've been there, done that. And that's why I'm calling it out. I'm saying you can go your own path, three, four, four, whatever, what whatever many years it takes, it takes. You will learn. Eventually, the smart ones will you'll figure this out. By the time you are whipped, like the market shows you, okay, that's fine. But what I know is the whole, the whole point of 
experts recommendation consulting serving coaching is to guide you so that you don't you don't you know if 10 people are, are, are going in the direction and all of them are falling into a ditch or a pit you are the 11th person <laughs> if you don't call somebody that passed that road before and say <laughs> if you don't call them you too will fall in if you don't do research to see what mistakes did other people make and and hear their story and listen to them and pay attention you are bound to repeat their mistakes that's why when i host events i bring in investors like savvy investors like leading investor like scott ford is the single largest investor in rwanda advisor to president i'll say scott go and watch my videos with him the reason i sit down with him i'm like scott <laughs> tell me your story <laughs> tell me your story ah he would tell me he would tell me there was a day i was having a private meeting with him i was like the lord is my shepherd he said me i've gone to valley of the <laughs> he told me he continues to advise me why so that we don't repeat the mistakes those who have gone ahead have made because if you don't listen to them if you don't have when i say i'm hosting events hosting summits hosting classes these are resources to shorten your own journey to make it to help you accelerate your where you're going but when you don't show up it's we can't help right when you don't show up and you don't invest in it oh i'm hosting nigeria investment conference pay 99 dollars. oh nobody wants to, okay you will pay more than that 19 in your own error i'm telling you when somebody like myself we've invested in flying like oh there's this here we fly to new york with my own resources you will, i host events i use my resource i do and then i'm telling you pay for night whatever 599 whatever and you're saying don't don't worry it's okay in that way there's a price to be paid you want to invest you want to trade it's 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 business and if you're going into any space research information skills connection i've not even talked about that the right connection will open would make your journey faster i remember one of my clients like end of last year i was hosting you know we're doing a session and she was like towing i want to go into agriculture i'm looking for information who can really tell me this this i was like hold on there picked my phone called someone that actually works in the ministry of agriculture that is a member called her put her on speaker they asked the question that person was like giving us right <laughs> you know what that means you know the real stuff and then she was like okay just give her my number i'll help her I'm like okay make the connection that's it having somebody in the government that would actually add in the ministry of agriculture that will tell you where the opportunities are where the incentives are they will point you to the farmland <laughs> that will guide you you need guides whether um whether investment guides right because you want my whole point is be more savvy let's be more savvy at these things okay what other i hope i'm not losing my so pick a role exporter importer consultant are you a government agency are you an investor you just want to put your money to work what vehicles are you going to use that is sophisticated and structured? Please structure it. I beg you. My members know this. That's why <laughs> the way I talk to my members is different from, you know, because on social social media is social media. But if it's like, I don't have, as a parent, I only have responsibility for my own children, <laughs> right? I don't get to advise people that, right? So my members, you know, like, I won't mention names like, you know when i see what they're doing i'm like no 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 that's not acceptable to me go and get a lawyer fix that thing fix that thing i'm not i'm not going to sanction <laughs> that kind of um unstructured engagement so that's why i teach how to structure partnerships like how to collaborate how to do all these things because you have to put in legal language legal terms you have to you, you i mean we don't get to do the future of all of these things you you have to be more savvy the people that are savvy are the ones leaning i'm winning 
pick a pos okay, pick a row, then <clears throat> you know, all these other things. So, depending on the role, if you're an exporter, what do you need to know? Now you, you create a path for yourself, like a growth path. Okay. Exporter, what, what products, what commodities? Okay. Who are you selling it to? What's your pricing model? Branding, right? Are you <clears throat> distributing it? Just how are you going to distribute it? Right? Shipping, logistics, right? That the, so I have an export class for those people. So if you're if you're looking to if you're in the US and you want to import from Africa to US and distribute, <clears throat> there's a class, a three hour. If you, you will go to school because you don't know what you don't know. Okay. And if you step in without knowing, without understanding, that's where that failure, uh, Mr. Jade was talking about, is that you will have to, it's like the light bulb effect. How many light, how many attempts? Did the inventors have to make before they figured out which combination creates creates the light bulb? That's that's what entrepreneurship is. Oh yeah, now I remember. I was going to tell you my six, five six steps of entrepreneurship. I was talking about. Okay, you see, guys, <laughs> these questions take me off a little bit. So in my entrepreneurship programs, I have my own framework that I use to accelerate people's um, entrepreneurship path right to success. What I say is if you go through one, two, three step and you don't do four, you are a charity company. You create value, you're giving value, but the people you're giving the value to cannot, cannot afford your value. So you use other people's money to create value in the marketplace. That's charity. For entrepreneurship and co those with commercial interest, when you create value, the person consuming your value is the one to pay so for example if i create classes and courses if you need that class and course to advance your own financial goals right you pay for it if you cannot afford it and i'm like mm, you can't afford it and i give it to you free that's charity and many entrepreneurs have mixed those two things together Okay, is that oh Africa? I want to trade with Africa, or I want to help Africa. The moment in your mind, this is where mindset is. The moment you tell yourself a story in, in your mind that you are helping Africa, you are true. You, you are not Africa will not help you. <laughs> See, I can't help but laugh. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, mindset around this <clears throat> investment and trade is that I'm helping people be okay with com having commercial interest and declaring to yourself and the world that you actually have commercial, that you are in need to make money. But if you are still wrestling that thing in, in your heart, that's why the words people speak does not align. It's very destructive to their goal. I know in their hearts they want to make money, but for some reason, they're out here in the street saying they are, they are helping Africa. Well, you will help Africa, meaning you, you will pour into Africa, but you Africa will not help you. Return on investment. So be careful with that narrative. Um, Yansun Tafari says, I have been working on developing some preventative products. Okay, so, so that's an example of picking a role. If your, your role is, now I don't know you, I don't know your role, I'm just making assumptions. These are the things I tell people. You're working on deve developing pre pre uh, preventative products. In my mind, let me see how I'm interpreting just that one line. Several things could be going on there. You may be trying to use, um, say, moringa and herbs or products because you use the word preventative. So I'm assuming it's else. See, I'm making, I'm reading so many things into one line. The, based on what you give me, I'll mirror it back and explain it back to you. So if you give me more, that's why when I host one on one, you give me more, then I can help you more. If I know little, I can't help you, <laughs> right? That's the power of personalized services. So based on just that one line, you said, I have been working on developing some preventative product. What I would say is I am assuming you are in the health space. I'm assuming that maybe some of the medicinal products, Moringa, different things in Africa, you want to maybe encapsulate or create a, a product out of it. Now, that's maybe step one. So it's going to require a lot of research. The next step would be Packaging, branding, distribution. Where do you want to distribute? Is it under AFC, FTA to other African countries? Or that local market, you could distribute it. Where's the demand? 
So in export development, I talk about demand. You, you need to understand demand. Why is that important? There's no point creating something you, that you cannot sell. <laughs> Again, think of, unless you have strong backing, this is when we talk about research and development. You have the biggest investors behind you, you know, just like research and development in, um, in tech, um, in, um, the health space. So I'm not, I'm not saying that's the right approach, but only deep pockets go into that stuff. And there are some programs I've heard about in the past where U S government supports some markets, research development stuff, right. With some grants. So anyway, those are my assumptions. Always think about distribution and demand for your pro. Always ask yourself, where is demand? This is if you're a business person. If you're a business person, fine. If you are still with that mindset of I'm helping, you won't understand what I'm saying. Demand is the key. Who is demanding? Who is going to buy these things from you? Where's the demand signal? That's what we call it. Listen to the demand signals. Assess it and then build a strategy, market entry strategy. Otherwise, you are investing and then you are looking... You are, where are the buyers? <laughs> where are the, you know, are you a B2C, B2B or B2G? <clears throat> is it a government that would consume your product or services? Or is it another business that will use your product in their manufacturing process? Or is it um, the end consumer? And where does your end consumer live? Where are they? Depending on where they are, your marketing plan and strategy would should align to your goals. Make sense? So that's something. So there are three, <laughs> there are three levels <laughs> that I've created. Now, let me say four. I just launched one this, this month, right? Now, currently, before last year, there were three levels. Now, four levels. At the very base of all of these things is what I call business acumen, business savvy. You have to be, I was making a lot of assumptions, making, um, assuming that, you know, when I say trade and investment, you know, on my part, I was assuming that, um, you know, I was attributing a certain level of sophistication to the people approaching me until I realized, oh, sorry, because where I'm coming from as a strategist to the world's largest company, we think at a certain level based on all the things I've done. So I'm, I had to, you know, train myself enough to be able to serve everyday people, right? Because when I'm hosting events where we are engaging at the highest levels of government and business. Right, that's how I engage. So, because of where I'm coming from, <laughs> you know, I made a lot of assumptions at the beginning. And that assumption cost me. That's why I'm saying your assumptions may cost you. The assumption I made that people were ready cost me a lot. Because I was busy opening up opportunities with international buyers like, oh, yes, Af why are you not buying from Africa? Africa is this, Africa. They said, go and bring those people. These are the opportunities. Go and bring them. Ha, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. I assumed that people had the skill to participate at the levels I was already at. <laughs> Fortune one, largest retailer in the world. That sophistication, that's where I was. For those who knew, knew me years ago, I used to be in corporate. For you, if you're just joining and seeing this work now, I'm trying to also tell you where I'm coming from. Right? Global sourcing, supplier management for the world's largest company. That's where I'm coming from. So when I left, I made this <laughs> incredible assumption that all I had to do <clears throat> was get the stakeholders in the room, trade with Africa. And their magic would happen. No, we're on the journey. Along that journey, I started realizing crickets. Like the, it's like it's it was like you are we are trying to tr turn a wheel that is uh, stiff, right? That's what I did not bank on. I thought it was like boom, 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 because that's at that level of sophistication, the world was already moving. Italian spaghetti, right? Mex um Chile, bananas, Vietnamese apparel, right? Like boom, 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 India, these. The world is moving. <laughs> Things are happening. Billion, billion level. That's where I sat. And I was seeing the numbers and the trends. I was like, ah, African core. If you if you know me, like what of African trade? 
international trade drives global wealth distribution so how do we bring africa to the room to the table and they were like go and bring them and i'm like i'll be right back like uh i not sure she that i'll be right back <laughs> i'm still back oh. <laughs> i'm still are you? let me tell you the four levels to really then get to that level that i was talking about business acumen learn how let start talking business talk marketing business model commercial like it's all about commercial don't come to me with i'm helping africa please please don't come to me no 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 i'm not in that business charity in fact even charity is a business model the only thing about the difference is the person that will consume what you're creating like i said before cannot afford it so you you get your partners to donate and donate and donate for business venture you are bringing value into the marketplace and africa can afford it and buy it or you are bringing products into the us for example okay i see more please keep dropping your question i'll get to it but let me finish this train of thought four business foundation business when i talk about business development design thinking understanding your customer journey who they are where are they in retail big data we know it we know you we know who you are. We know what you are eating. See, I have lips. You, we, we will sell you lipstick, B2C. Okay? Big data, research, development. Approaching trade and investment as a business mogul, an entrepreneur, a business owner. That's the only way you can engage with me. I, can't, I don't deal with any other thing. Like, I... I are you in to make money are you in for do you have commercial interest if you don't that's okay i only deal with people with commercial interest or advanced people actors that are advancing this thing we've had enough of this uh, merry-go-round right okay so business foundation that's so whenever you hear me say business development i'm teaching business development i'm teaching entrepreneurship the reason is because you have to secure that foundation before you start building the skyscraper fundamental understanding of marketing sales this development right model customer profile what are you solving for value proposition you have to engineer those things now international trade is the olympics of business so this is a foundational component we want to secure that foundation first next level up is if you are an exporter not only do you understand business development you must then understand export development market entry development because you're going from your market to cross border you have to understand policies importation exportation documents key stakeholders requirements labeling you have to know all those things so for example let's say you have a product you're already winning in nigeria or ghana that product the labeling that ghana accepts don't assume that Europe, US, Canada accept the same label. So there is work to be done. Okay, I'll leave that. So export development. So first, foundation, business foundation, business fundamentals. Okay. Export development, market entry. The third level is trade and investment facilitation, but it's you can skip these steps. So it's not really rigid. It's not a rigid stairway, but you need all three. But I'll tell you, but depending on what you need, right? So trade and investment facilitation is that one that I say opens you just beyond your own. Oh, my business, my business. Guess what? Look left, right, center. There are more actors. The landscape is bigger. There are investors looking to invest. There are business, um, there are government stakeholders looking to showcase their investment, trade and investment promotion agencies. <clears throat> we break those things down. The fourth one that I launched this January leadership mindset success because when we have business acumen you know all of these things i talk about what i'm also finding is that everything you're able to do falls to the level of your leadership and personal development how you talk how you communicate how you set your business goals right how you engage how you brand yourself even if you're brand you do right how you, all the mindset can you right how you're pursuing opportunities so if we bring you into a room if you if you don't everything will fall to your 
what you can get out of that space at my event is based on your personal development. So I have a 12 module program that I just launched this month. So that's my own logic is every time I hear, so I have communities that I lead. I'm listening in I'm, because I'm, I'm, we're already operating at a certain level. Remember I shared where I'm coming from. This whole thing is throwing people like guiding people to go up their own step. It's about you, your journey. If you're on this journey, great. If you're not, that's also fine. So thank you so much. And uh, Lewis Global says, very good conversation. Appreciate that. Um, okay, I'm going through Instagram now. Okay, I told you, okay, uh, let's see. Thank you. Okay. Let me go to, um, we have a comment from LinkedIn. Okay, Jade, what would you say is the first step in investing coming from nothing? Hello from here in the US. So the first thing is really information. You need to first educate yourself, right? Because what I've found also as an entrepreneur is you could serve, you could provide services, right? If, even this is a fundamental, when, when I talk about funda business fundamentals, right? Is that the key is not in what you don't have, it's in what you have. It's a mindset shift. First of all, you have to make a mindset shift. Don't focus on what you don't have. <laughs> because if you do, you're never going to take the first step. Okay, this is Coach Towing talking now, for real. If you're focusing on what you don't have, you will never take a first step. And it's in taking each step that you learn more. You take the first courageous step, you learn, you adapt, you grow. Next step, next step, next step, and then you arrive. That's why my coaching leadership program, this is, these are the things we'll dive into because at the end of the day, it's personal development and mindset. You are holding yourself back. Nobody's doing this to you. Your mind and the way you think and you're approaching, right? So what I would say is, let's say you're starting from nothing. You don't have nothing. You, all you think. In fact, there's a biblical... <laughs> <laughs> there's a bible verse that speaks to this thing i'm talking about which i thoroughly believe in and that's why we, have, we should be very very careful it says like um the person who has more will be given to them the person who does not have what they have will be taken you know sometimes people read that and go how can you take what i don't have no it's perception if you think you don't have even that thing you have you may lose it that's where I interpret that scripture is that people who think they have, they invest whatever you have, your talents, your skill, invest that. That is start there. Many people think in terms of money in the bank. Start with your talent and skills. What can you provide? How can you support? How can you serve somebody else? Business is about creating value for other people and asking for value in return. And that value may be product, it may be services. So the first thing I would say you need to invest in knowledge knowledge right because once you know when we know better we do better once you know the more you know the more you can navigate the landscape so that would be the first thing you say what would you say is the first step the first step is knowledge and you can get knowledge through research google trade with africa you will see my work you see other people's work start reading those things are available <laughs> there are some things i start reading World Bank, I know the chief economist of World Bank, they give me books. Start with books. Right? Start with books. Okay, uh, this is a long one. Okay, this is a it's too long. Uh, if you can condense it, um, if you can if you can keep it short, I will be able to respond, but it's it's I can't read that, it's too long. Okay, Idris um Busari. Please keep on dropping. I'm looking at time now. I may need to go very soon, but so I'm making the last call. And then let me know what you think. Was this helpful? Idris Busari says, hi, Tony. I hope you are well. Okay, how do you advise? Okay, how do you advise service providers to go about packaging service for the international market? Who are the actors that service provider need to partner with? For success okay th that's a great question it's um it's part of the uh, trade and investment facilitation course and i think you need a combination of business and that course because yeah let me explain why 
in any type of business, whether it's a local business in the US or international. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> you need to learn how to create your business model, how you're going to make money. Before you actually do that, it's part of my five step. Before you create your business model, meaning how do I extract value? The first thing I teach you is how to, first of all, you, you talked about um, who are the actors. Great. I'll ask you a question like what service are you trying to, because <clears throat> the actors relevant to what you're trying to do, Idris, is going to be determined by what service you're delivering. Okay. Are you a consultant? Is it technology services, consulting services, right? Financial services, or you're a shipping company, logistic services. <clears throat> so tell me which service are we talking about? Depending on that service, the job you have to do is map your stakeholders, which is one of my uh, programs, right? Is you, you need to map who cares about that service, right? So you need to understand, okay, your service, your stakeholders, who will pay you, who cares enough about it to bring the, to dip their hand in their pocket and pay you for that service. Otherwise, charity. That's the business heart I'm saying, business fundamentals. Your service, your stakeholders, mapping. Let me teach you one other matrix right now. There's a matrix <clears throat> that I teach. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me do it. Okay, no, let me. I'm going to wrap up very soon, which then I'll be able to drink all the water I want. So anyway, there's a matrix I teach, four quadrants. There are people who want what you have. They cannot afford you. There are people who can afford you. They don't want what you have. There are people who don't want what you have, and they have the money. They don't care. And then there are people who want what you have, and they can afford it. That's where business mindset comes in. <clears throat> you only want to go after the people who want your service and they have the money to pay you or you find somebody else to buy it on their behalf. So that service, the actors, stakeholder mapping, okay? Stakeholder mapping. And then you now have to do what I call engineering, packaging, like levels. That's why when we say, you remember, I just explained four levels and I explained why. And you can mature yourself up and down that chain. You have to do that for yourself, right? Level one, level two, level three. Your pricing model. That's when I teach people your price. How do you price each of those levels? You have to have a fundamental understanding of your players. Is it government? Is it businesses? Is it B two C? All of that. I I can't answer it for you. This is where one on when I do. So I do courses, memberships, one on one. That one-on-one -on -one for people who have budget and want to accelerate because you can go spend a year figuring this thing out. But because of the reason I teach entrepreneurship is I already have my process. When I take you through that process, you build your business like instantly, right? With that, with that knowledge. So I can't, I can't answer. So I have more questions like what's that service sector? Based on that, we define your stakeholders. Based on that, we identify their pain points right and their aspirations based on that right you do packages to solve you have to be solving something for them based on that we design a business model in terms of what we will charge them <laughs> your price then on another space we now talk about marketing and sales your your channels why because you can do all that step one two three four if you don't market it if people don't know, if those stakeholders, you have to go find, you have to also find, ask yourself, where are they congregating? See, I just gave you guys a mini, not even mini, a dump of masterclass now, but we want more classes. That's why I talk about, every time I'm talking about business, people are like, mm, I don't need it. There is a system and an engineering space way to build a business. I figured it out. It took me a while. I used to um, design um, like business optimization for the world's largest, like, Logistics, supply chain, mathematics, uh, sorry, manufacturing systems, procurement system for the world's biggest. So even me, I did what I'm telling you, don't do. I rushed in. Oh, entrepreneur, what is this? We can by that, by the time that thing showed me, eh, I said, ah, 
so once I was like, okay, no, I'm smart. First degree mathematics. We will figure everything is a process. That's what I told myself. Everything I will read books. You think you think I'm just let me. You think I'm just uh, talking mouth? I've eaten books, value proposition, business model. So when I'm telling you, I teach business development and entrepreneurship in business schools. See, construction, right? But people don't want to, you don't want to read and you want to build a business. Huh? Come, keep on doing Anyway. So by the time I started my own journey, so my, my business optimization side kicked in. I said, this thing cannot be rocket science right so i had to tap into my because i used to implement you know the most sophisticated supply chain solutions in the world for the biggest stakeholders right so at some point uh, that skill came in for me <laughs> so now i was like oh design thinking i have a background in design thing i would design think this thing customer journey what we used to do in retail customer mapping customer journey i was like i will do this and then once I figured it for myself, now I teach it and you will pay, you pay for this. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. It says data destruction services, information technology. Yeah, that, that's, I've given you the eye level of the work that has to do. You can take the course or if you have budget for deeper dive with me, feel free to reach out to you, mystery.com. Um, Yansun Tafari, sorry it was that long as I was trying to give you the backdrop of the business. As you said, you were not sure. Okay, yeah, maybe after after the uh, session, I can. It was quite extensive, but I will take a look at it after. Idri says thanks for the amazing insight, Toyin. You're welcome. Kabbalaji said this was great as always. Thank you. Yeah, this is what happens behind the scenes, people. Like I, I struggled a lot with uh because I didn't want to do this. I'm telling you, true confessions. You've probably heard me before, if you've followed me. Uh, Lewis said, "Very good. Okay, good conversation." I struggled. Like I don't want. I don't like putting my business. Out. I I I mind my business and I let people mind theirs. And I don't like putting myself out there. But I'm realizing, like people don't even know. Like you don't know what you don't know. And people keep asking fundamental. I see too much. I see a lot. Not too much, but I see a lot. I engage a lot. I mean, I'm involved in, I'm pulled into different conversations by different stakeholders and I'm going, okay, in order for us to actually accelerate and advance trade investment, all of these things. Okay. Maybe I'll start sharing a little bit so that people really understand what I'm saying. Okay. So that's, that's why I'm, I mean, I'm spending more time and investing more time to break it down. Right. Is to break it down that, okay. Back to today's topic, how to invest and trade with Africa is that first um, pick a role. So I'm, I'm doing a recap now. If there are no more questions, uh, yeah, Louis said you're right. Research is critical to building any company, in Af even any company in the world. It's this is not even an Africa. You know, sometimes people think Africa is that unique. Is it more unique than India or China? Tell me, if you are going to India to do business, what are you going to do? That's what I'm saying. That people, people seem, people underestimate what's going on in Africa because of the narrative. Why do you think if you cannot go to China or Southeast Asia, India, anywhere just like that, why are you trying that stuff in Africa? Because it's just Africa. Yeah, you 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 get what you get. Oh, I'm helping Africa. Oof. You get what you get. The market will prove you otherwise. People think, oh, Africa is a wild, wild west. Competition is fierce. <laughs> you want to run a business in Africa? Add. <laughs> Why is it different? You want to go to India and build a company and do a website, and you just fly on the plane, you can get on the plane and show up to India. India will show you what India is. You want to do business with China and a lot. This is back to arrogance. The arrogance of people towards the continent. You are paying a price for your arrogance. Can I say that? Coach Tony saying it for real. Arrogance, you pay. You pay. It's expensive. Arrogance is expensive. You know when they say, what goes before a fall? <laughs> yeah. That stuff in business, for real. You will pay. 
But if you don't want to pay, become a student. Research, study, read a book, ask questions. If I say there is an event, rush in, pay. Buy the truth, sell it not. Successful people pay for knowledge. They pay for access. They pay because what they don't know and the communities they don't belong, they can't reap the reward. That's why mindset. Okay? <laughs> Louis Gober said, I'm very humble. <laughs> I'm, I'm very humble. Like, when I say humility, humility to just understand we don't know it all. I don't know. We don't know what you don't know. So, the let's become a student of entrepreneurship and international trade and investment. So that when someone like myself, we're creating platforms and we're bringing key stakeholders and we're bringing speakers and we're bringing savvy investors, presidential advisors, ambassadors to come and teach us, you will not say, Mwah. you won't snub it. There's a lot of, sn you. if you snub it, I snub you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> for the first year I hosted this stuff, I spent a good year, a full year, scouting the whole world, interviewing, talking to people from World Bank, presidential advisor, everything. Why? After I now spoke to those people, I said, okay, this knowledge that I've acquired, my community needs it. I then invited them to use their own time and their own resources to fly to come and educate us. World Bank chief economist on Africa flew from D.C. to Arkansas. Why? To show us the same graph and data that it shows that World Bank IMF uses, that he used to work with ministers of finance, that the whole world pay to get. They brought it to our, like, and then I will now invite the community, come, come, pay this, pay this, come and learn. They will say, we don't, and then you, no, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. Next month, I invite you. <laughs> let me let me pitch now. Okay. Nigeria Investment Conference next month, February 2022. I've started. See, that's me. I'm doing my part. Your own part is to pay me and reward me for doing the work for you. <laughs> if I do this work and you want to benefit and you want the knowledge, resources, expertise, education, you will pay. <laughs> so how do you invest in trade with Africa? Proximity to stakeholders. So we're bringing in, um, so our confirmed speakers include invest, um, NEPC, NIPC. Do you know the acronym Investment uh, Commission? We have at the state levels, we have um, export officials at key states level. Um, we have private sector stakeholders. If you're a member and you want extra stuff reach out to me my premium members i'll say to you <laughs> i will do something for you maybe you feature your product we'll, we'll talk about it so um that's it louis said willing to learn and build good friendships yes we only do business with people we like know and trust that's why when i say join my international trade membership is that people are connecting with themselves savvy people taking classes attending events introducing themselves, doing business with one another. You need to be in those spaces. You know, social media is great up to a level, right? I don't know you. You don't know me. There are certain things we can and cannot do with each other. And that's why when I talk about um, partnership, maybe another day I'll talk about that. Um, I talk about, you know, <laughs> where, <laughs> don't partner with people you've not done due diligence on. That People you don't know, don't. Don't do it. I'm talking from experience. I don't do it anymore. I used to it's one of those stories me too i have my stories and so when i coach you and i say don't do it if you do it whatever happens is you is your fault if you've heard me say that and you don't do it somebody comes to you and starts saying i can do this for you and then you run you get what you get so this is about leveling up for people as i'm wrapping up today it's been an honor thank you so much i hope this was helpful an hour long class of engagement how do you invest in Africa? How do you trade with Africa? Knowledge is power. Connection is key. Education is important. And teaching you how to put it all together is what we do. This has been Coach Toyin, <laughs> CEO of Nazaru, founder of Trade with Africa Business Summit, international trade. This, this, this. I have several events, actually. Several events, Retail in Africa, um, the AFCFT Roundtable, 
Nigeria Investment Conference. Um, we do different things, and um, I have a um, I have a calendar, 2022 calendar. You can see on my website, tobimesiwi.com, if you're interested in seeing everything we have out there. And the reality is that my members subscribe, my people members subscribe for the full year of calendar. And then non-members, feel free. Any you don't have to subscribe annual, but any of our programs that we are up that is happening per month, you can just uh, purchase access to individual ones. But the people who want the full uh, programming, investment conferences, investment events, training programs, masterclasses, workshops, all of the things we have planned for the year, they subscribe annually, and then they participate. They access all the courses. Everything is available to them. But I also understand that people out there, if you're not ready for that level of investment and you just want to start where you are, you can start with individual courses. That's also available on my website. And if you're ready for more personalized, um, I have few st st um, slots for personalized consulting. And that's why I talk about consulting, coach, and instructor. I teach, I coach. And then I consult. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you. Happy New Year. Aqua Suha says, Happy New Year. It's been a while. Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Yeah, this year I'm I'm definitely going, um, I'm I'm shedding more light because I think I've made a lot of assumptions. Like I, I make a lot of assumptions in terms of how ready I thought people were. <laughs> Because when I'm in the room talking about economic development with an ambassador, right, we get, like, I'm not, I don't coach them. They coach me, actually. Like, if you watch my interview with Ambassador Muchanga, this is the team that put together AFCFTA. Like, they came to Chicago on my BR. Me, I'm like, I just go like this. Ambassador, what's your advice for me? That's what I do. I bow. I bow at their feet. And I say, Ambassador, please, what should I do? Advise me. Advise me, please. What should I do? Should I turn left? Should I turn turn right? Scott, please. How do you do this? I'm tired. <laughs> they guide, they encourage, they inspire me. So when I'm here and I'm saying I'm a coach, I have people I'm drinking from. I have people guiding me. And then I see people outside, out, out there. You have, to, you have to find people who believe in you. People who invest in you. This journey is a long don't ever, it's not easy. If any, I will not tell you it's easy. What I'm saying is harm yourself. You see, you want to take off. You want to go to the next level. You want to go to the moon. See, the power you pack is what will determine how far you penetrate that. Right? Pack. That's what I'm saying. Knowledge is power. That's what it means. The more you know, if you are a medical doctor, the, you, are, you, are, you are a successful medical doctor because you've packed knowledge. You are a successful lawyer because you know your stuff. You embody knowledge. So nobody can tell you anything. You are an accountant. Why are you an accountant? Is the knowledge you embody. If you want to win in international market and trade with Africa, embody knowledge. That's what I mean. Research. Deep, 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 deep research. Like, like for real, I'm like, World, World Bank stuff. We, we, you think I'm just out here talking, talking. This was given to me. There are two of them. You know, I host summit and do all those things. When I talk about Af this is published by World Bank. You see? World Bank Group. It was given to me by the chief economist on Africa. There was one page I was reading. These are charts. Charts. Uh, can you see Instagram? Oh, it's like charts and everything, right? There was one time I was reading one of those books. And they said, according to the World Bank, U.S. controls, a uh, U.S. has 4% of the population in the world, but controls 40% of global wealth. I say, Shay, I took that quote too. It's part of our mantra, like Africans haven't tapped into what's going on in the U.S. It's one of the largest markets in the world, 40% of global wealth. World Bank told me that. See why I read? You need to bury yourself in books. Bury yourself in books embody the knowledge so that nobody can cheat you see one of the things i've talked about people talk about a lot of um, exploitation do you know what drives exploitation people nobody can exploit you if you know your stuff when you don't know how the world market is you make assumptions you think people are people come to you and they start lying to you that's the recipe for exploitation so if you don't want to be exploited right embody knowledge 
if you are going with me, you will get PhD. When this is all done, <laughs> you will get PhD in international trade. <laughs> okay, Lewis says, where can I get it? Sorry, I can't. It's, it was personally and delivered to me by the team that published it. Okay, two of the, the different types. So, but you maybe you just Google World Bank, uh, the Africa group. So, on that World Bank, maybe search Africa Pulse. If you're looking for, I think maybe they will have a digital, now that everybody's online, that maybe there's a digital copy. So, Africa's Pulse, I think they release it every year. And this is based on uh, economists like deep research on Africa, emerging risks, um, public debt. Ah, <laughs> trust me. Go to toyomesiri.com as well. Maybe what I might also find, maybe some of the uh, presentation. I put some of the presentation. So when we host events, this, this is what we're doing. Leading experts, economists, financial institutions, um, government agencies, um, uh, technical experts, trade experts, investment experts. Those are the people that speak at my event. Why? Everything that comes out of their mouth is data manufacturing in africa automotive manufacturing in africa agriculture like when those people are speaking you see as i'm speaking i'm speaking myself these people have embodied knowledge dr andrew nevin pw surprise waterhouse cooper economist on africa he flew in from lagos to chicago to dump things for us so when I, when we have that data that's what we provide to our membership so when i tell you i'm hosting an event what people don't understand is i'm a strategist i'm not an event planner in terms of, because, so this is where people make a mistake. They read me wrong. So because they've gone to other people's events and those other people's events added no value or little value to them, they, they superimpose that on what I'm doing. They don't understand that. No, that's not it. I'm a strategist. My event is not a talk show. We are seeking trade information and the people we bring, they have the information. And not only information, they have key resources that immediately your life will change. That's the only reason all of this is worth it. If it's just to host event, no, 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 no. It is a strategy to unlock trade information access, right? Like when, when I say, okay, it's a strategy, right? To unlock, to extract the res to, to help educate us on what we're doing wrong, what we should advise, and what we should do better at. That's it. Now I, I would know I will work with you in the near future. Yeah, we have a membership. Whenever you're ready, um, where can I get? Okay, I think I answered. Just Google Africa Pulse. They have a lot of information here, okay? Bye, everyone. See you again. Um, and let me know... Um, what questions you have, message, but toyumessary.com is where you can find a lot of resources, my courses, memberships, like literally it's an overkill. All the things that I do, it's it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And it's for those, it's for those who want to lead. It's it's about you. If you're going in this direction, all I'm doing is empowering you, equipping you, right, and connecting you. That's my role. So bye. Thank you.